Ready to start the second half between Pittsburgh and Virginia Tech here at Thompson Field. At goals in about the first three minutes, but then after that, a pretty evenly fought matchup between two ACC teams that are hungry for a conference win. And just already another change made by the Panthers, a new goalkeeper, Alexander Steinbach, replacing Peña Ronda. An interesting change, another freshman comes in, the German goalkeeper, the 5'11 goalkeeper. It'll be interesting to see. He's played 90 minutes on the season with five saves, but he hasn't given up a goal, so with uh, a first half like we had, it'll be interesting to see how he, he fits into this match. Well, Peña Ronda did not have to make a save in that first half, but the Hokies did keep the pedal to the floor on a few of those possessions challenging the back line. So Steinbach getting the chance to play. Places Peña Ronda, Vidovic decides on another freshman goalkeeper. Washi boots it. We are underway in the second half. So for Pittsburgh, Blaine, we saw in that first foul that was called where Edward Kiza was the main target. He was fouled by Swanevelt, the goalkeeper for Virginia Tech. They haven't done the best job of finding him in the attack since then. And I think the expectation, if you're a Virginia Tech defense, is that he is going to be the focal point. And so they know they have to shut him down. And I don't think that Pittsburgh had opportunities with possession to get him the ball. They started off well. Obviously, Almeida slips that ball in. He creates an opportunity for a penalty kick. But other than that, they haven't had sustained possession to be dangerous. And I think that that is probably where that problem stems from, more so than it does the Virginia Tech defense. Rowan for Pittsburgh. And you mentioned Almeida. He's the one that lofted that pass to Kiza. He's now back into the match as well. And for a young player to see that and to find a player like Kiza, a good job from the freshman. Oh, freshman all around. The main upperclassman for the Panthers, Javi Perez. And the only true senior for the Hokies, Rory Slevin. And Bailey, I, th I think that youth is a double-edged sword a little bit in that you have a little bit of a lack of experience and you have those freshman and sophomore mistakes. But then you're, you're producing a team that's going to make runs maybe a year or two later. So uh, interesting to see for both teams, and, and I'll be interested to see where they are one, two years from now. Well, the bulk of the work for Virginia Tech done by the juniors, 20 points, and only one has been scored by Rory Slevin on an assist. Throw in Hokies. Well, the two players switching in and out of the screen for Virginia Tech. They were the main catalyst for the Hokies in that first half. James Kasak as well as David Son. Yep. And James Kasak, I mean, coming into this game, I had expectations. That lefty on the outside, I knew he was going to be a bit of, of an impact. But he was a major impact, probably the impact for Virginia Tech. He obviously was the reason that that goal happened. So I'm interested to see how he continues into this second half. And then, furthermore, into the rest of this season. Chandler Vaughn lets the ball roll away. And a throw in for the Panthers. Strickler fights for space. Cuts middle. Left footer. Popped up. Hokies want a foul. And they'll get a PK. He was knocked into by Jose Luis Senior Arbona. And a great job from Strickler here. He sticks with it, gets tangled up from behind. Senya Arbona does a great, excuse me, does an, a poor job there of coming in from behind and grabbing. But Strickler does a great job to go down there in the box. And Bailey, it wasn't in the first 50 seconds. Right. But uh, the first four minutes will do. <laughs> excuse me, three minutes. Right. This is coming right off and just wasting no time. And that was close to being outside of the box. But it happened in, Senya Arbona pushing the sophomore down to the ground and John Ingeson will take it for the Hokies. And if we were interested to see how the goalkeeper stepped up in this change, this is his opportunity to prove why he's in the game right now. Stein back, now in the net. Ingeson will take the penalty kick. He shoots. In there, Hokies take the lead. 
John Ingeson nets a goal for Virginia Tech. Quick action in the second half, it's 2-1. Clinical finish there from Ingeson. A player with a little bit of experience and he knows what he's doing. Sells it well, puts it in the back of the net. No chance there for Steinbach. They're there to greet him, Christo Strickler. He was the guy that made it happen. And now Ingeson, after that penalty kick, fourth goal of the season. All of them have been right in front of the net on those PKs. So a huge momentum swing in the second half. And in the first half, Virginia Tech goes down early on a PK. Second half, a little bit of a switch. The same thing, how does Pittsburgh respond? You have a young team, can they put a ball in the back of the net? And can they do it quickly to even this thing back out? So Steinbach, a pretty rough go of it in those first couple of minutes. Pena Ronda started the match for Pittsburgh, played the entire first half, then Steinbach put in that tough position to defend a penalty kick, just guessed the wrong side. And Bailey, I, I think that the switch is kind of interesting. You know, you mentioned no saves really needed. I don't think that uh, Penurana did anything in that first half that was questionable. Maybe he has an injury that's nagging that we don't know about, but I think it's an interesting change, especially with a tie game. Now for Kwashi. Cross. Strickler. Sons. Goal, Hokies. David Sons found his opportunity and converted. All of a sudden, it's 3-1 Hokies. 